I haven't been up here in so long. <laughs> Ooh, that weather though, that weather. But I wanted to do a probably work day. I was working on this beautiful quilt of one of my clients. I did this quilt probably like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, because we dealt with a snowstorm and I couldn't do anything because I had no power. But we're gonna have fun today. There's electricity, there is light, there is power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm so thankful. I am so thankful that it's sunny outside, the snow disappeared, and you know, my dogs are bathing outside like it's sunlight. I should have been bathing outside because I need some vitamin D, but you know, I'm just so grateful. It's just a blessing. Nothing to complain about, just be thankful. So I ended up where la 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 one. So I ended up working on this client's quilt. <laughs> I ended up working on this client's quilt and I loved it. This is a beautiful quilt. I'm working on this quilt. I'm about, okay. <laughs> I think I did 10 rows. One of the things I'm having to worry about is like this line, both borders. Another thing I'm worried about is this is the design. And I'm having to make sure that it's placed perfectly in sequence. I ended up buying a pattern. I believe I got this at Urban Elements or... No, Urban Elements. And I accidentally purchased it. Yeah, Remember when a video a while back where I said, yeah, I contacted the client and asked her if she wanted this one. And she said yes. And then to come and find out, I got the wrong one. Well, the blessing is, it's this quilt pattern. Um, this other client liked it <laughs> and so it really came out beautiful and to be honest it fit the quilt lovely um, I had to kind of trim out some sections and that's where this is the trim out here and the trim out here it was a diamond pattern which was really pretty the only issue with it is you had to crop the top of it off so you didn't have any voids and you also had to crop the sides of it off so that it filled the space with quilting and you didn't have like chunks of area that weren't quilted because the design went off and then you'll have like a missing triangle area here you see the trimming out I also trimmed out on the top so that the quilting is what you see and there's no open voids. And I'm trying to make sure that it's accurate throughout the quilt, the distance between each row. I ended up doing like 10 rows, which is insane, insane, <laughs> insane. <laughs> Uh, to do 10 rows of a quilting design, but the quilting design was very open, meaning it didn't have a lot of density. So it quilted really fast. So I think I could do two rows per shot. So I ended up rolling the machine five times because you could do like two sections of rows in one path. Is that, uh, is that correct? Yeah. And it just quilted lovely. We have a bow a little bit, but it's not that big a deal. It's a beautiful beautifully made quilt and you could kind of like, I don't know if you saw me kind of just stretching it a little bit. And then some fabric she picked for the back. One of the issues with this quilt is at the very bottom I started seeing it kind of like uh -huh, and veered to like angle downward and wanted to take a nice left <laughs> and uh, Ah, I didn't see that coming. You can see that the quilt is wanting to go in, which is fine. So I need to iron and straighten, and then I'm going to kind of baste this down as straight as I can. Ah, you know, sometimes when you're quilting a quilt, as you're going through row by row, it, it just feels or looks straight, and it is. And then there's one section, and I don't know why this happens. Either the block, one of the blocks itself was warped or stretched, or if when she was sewing the bo border in this section, she just tugged more and pulled more, and so it stretched on her. It doesn't really matter why it happens. It just happens randomly sometimes. I could fix it by doing this or I can just softly 
Sometimes I don't like pleating, um, even though it straightens out the quilt a lot. I'm going to fix it now before we get to the last row because when we get to the last row, it may be too late. So I don't know if you see it, how it angles. Like, yeah. you see that? And then you have the puddling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unbaste here and I'm going to use this seam right here to tuck in a bit. Or I could use this seam. Let me see. <laughs> oh no. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. That's. Let me. I'm gonna have to unbase this and then iron. Let me see if I can iron this out somehow. So sometimes when the quilting is going through some fullness or puckering lines or full areas, when it quilts over it, you'll end up these weird pleats anyway. So sometimes pleating straightens everything out so beautifully that you don't have to worry about it after that. And so I decided with the amount of ironing I was doing and the way it was a bit stretched, it wasn't stretched a lot, but just in this area, I was able to go ahead and just tuck a pleat to where you didn't lose the point of the half square triangle and you didn't lose any of the design of the quilting because this is a beautiful quilt. And I was able to do that and I basted it down and then I let the machine go ahead and quilt it. So the quilt is doing this. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna see if I could iron this out. There is a pleat that I could take in right here and then it's a beautiful and then I'll straighten it all out. it here I'm gonna try to see if I could kind of iron this so that I'm just taking up right here um, and now it's not warping ironing is like your best friend almost done with the last row and then I've, I don't think I've ever shown a video on how I go ahead and hand sew it down. And so I ended up using an applique needle. It's a straw needle. Bottom line from Superior Thread. I love that thread for applique and I love this thread for when I do this because it's so fine. It's able to go through multiple layers and it's a strong, I can't talk today. It's a strong thread. Okay, strong, strong, say it strong thread I get my words I went ahead and I stitched it down and I'm just going to show with you the process of how I stitched it down it's not complicated at all you just want to make sure that any seam lines look like they were perfectly in line with each other so you don't see them off. The neat thing about when you stitch it down, it looks like you hand quilted that area and if she irons it or even puts it in the dryer, she, you can't notice that I did anything. Of course, I let my client know uh, that I did this so that she's aware, um, but if I would have told her, she would never know. And so here, I'm showing you the process of how I stitched it down, and I'm just gonna share with you different views of how it looks. Now, this quilt was gorgeous. Kathy Stockton does some beautiful, lovely, oh my God quilts. 